You know who's a winner? At KT Scott, you hear her in the mornings from 5 in the morning until noon on KNBR. She's the reason they're known as the sports leader. She joins us on <laughs> Yahoo Sports Talk Live. Did that one game. Oh, man, I'm going to have to pay you after the show, aren't I? <laughs> You'll it. be paying me. I'm sure you will. I'm <laughs> knuckle sandwich is what I'll end up getting. Did it put Steph Curry and the Warriors on the NBA map in that one night? No doubt. I mean, you're playing at the Garden against the Knicks, and even though they've had a, an awful run as an organization uh, the past number of years, there's still something about the Garden. It's got that mystique that everyone wants to be on that big stage. And Steph was on that stage a year ago tonight. And man, did he light it up. As you pointed out, 11 of 13 from three-point land. Are you kidding me? I remember watching that game and being on Twitter at the same time. And every single person, regardless of where they were in the world, it was hashtag Steph Curry. Curry is hot. Curry is on fire. Everyone was watching Steph Curry, and that was definitely the game that put him and the Warriors on the map. Kate, you buying the postseason experience thing? It is an uh, uh, even number year. It's supposed to go well it for is. the Giants, you know. It is, and I am buying it, especially after what we saw last night in Pittsburgh. I think that the Giants experience, their just utter calm throughout the night was so obvious because that's something that we saw at least I saw, was missing a little bit from the A's performance the night before because they got those leads and all they needed to do was kind of calm down and play just good baseball the rest of the way and they would have beaten the Royals and they weren't able to do that. Whereas the Giants last night, they got the lead. Bumgarner knew what to do. The defense played very sound baseball the rest of the way and that's why they're playing in Washington tomorrow. So yes, I think that playoff experience actually does make a big difference. And I think the fact that the Dodgers have been so successful, you're looking at the records right there, that's the difference right now. There's a five-game difference in the NL West. And if the Giants would have beaten the Rockies last night, if they would have beaten the Rockies a couple of times earlier in the season with that sweep at AT&T Park, which was literally the last time the Rockies won a road series, yeah, I think it is that big. And they've got a number more against the Diamondbacks and the Padres. As the season goes on, they have to beat these bad baseball teams. Marty Shaw just had a rotten year, right? I mean, the guy can play, right, Kate Scott? Give me something He here. can play, Jim. <laughs> but, like you said, the Texans were chosen to go to the Super Bowl last year, and then he decided to gift six points to pretty much every single team that they played. So, would he be an upgrade in name? I guess so. He's more known around the NFL. People would probably be more likely to tune in to see a Matt Schaub take on a Colin Kaepernick than a Matt McGloin take on a Colin Kaepernick. But is that what the Raiders want? No. Like Lowell said, they need production out of that position. This is Kate Scott. What, what are you more impressed with? Clay going for 38 and 31 minutes or the Warriors suffocating defense on Steve Blake? I was <laughs> slightly more. I think you led me into the answer <laughs> to this one, Greg. Well, Kobe didn't play. What are you trying play? to say? I was more impressed by Clay's 38. I thought that, you know, one of the things that he really struggled with last year was being consistent throughout an entire ball game. And the fact that he scored 27 in the first half, but then kept it going in the third, that was really impressive to me. And I'm hoping that we can see more of the same tonight. Did he have his moment stripped from him? You know, that was a big topic of conversation on the radio today. And I understand everyone who feels that way. I'm just not one of those people. I think the fact that he was able to get one final start at AT&T Park, I really think that was his moment. And I think in the end, you know, you heard Bochy post game say, well, I wasn't really thinking about it. I was trying to win the baseball game. So, you know, who knows what would have happened if they wanted to give him one final batter in the next inning, and that would have started a rally. And then all of a sudden the Dodgers come back. And now we're not talking about Barry Zito getting one more win as a giant. We're talking about the fact that Barry Zito pitched five innings, the bullpen effed it up, and Barry Zito goes out with another loss. So I I think that in the end, they did the right thing. How about giving him one batter on Sunday? Give him one hitter on Sunday. When, I mean, I think that he should actually, we were talking about the fact that maybe he should pinch bunt on Sunday because <laughs> he's, he's one of the best bunters <laughs> on the team. We always talk about the pearl that he laid down in 2012. So I think it would be fun if they can figure out a way to get him in there. I don't think it should be on the mound. I think it should be in the batter's box. Or maybe have him take out the lineup card, something to get him that, you know, a tip of the cap that everyone wanted. But if they can't do that, hey, Barry, thanks for your service. You're a World Series champ. I like that. Good answer. Kate Scott from KNBR 680. Mm -hmm. Five games series, they shocked him. And I'll give you the one edge on that note, Bruce Bochy over Matt Williams. Absolutely. Rookie manager yeah. against a guy who's done it before, that's the edge. The that's Giants probably have. an area, if you don't have anything on paper, maybe that's the one area you that's need to the have. Edge. And the thing I will say to Tim's point 
is the fact that, yes, history makes us think that the Seahawks won't be able to repeat. And as a 49ers fan, I would love to believe that. But they are a really young football team. Russell Wilson is coming into his prime. And one of the guys who was hurt last year and wasn't able to contribute until the very end is Percy Harvin. And he is really healthy now. And he's looking to make his mark. So i got to be honest, as a 49ers fan, I'm a little nervous about that. At the same time, I think the 49ers are going to start off the season slow because they're without Bowman. And they're probably going to be without Alden Smith. And that could actually come back to be a positive because those guys are going to play Fresh less legs. games Fresh at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're the A's. You're the fourth best team in baseball. And you got Grant Green coming up, mm -hmm. and you got a young pitcher coming up now. Come on, isn't that a slap in the face to A's fans? Shouldn't they go out and get them, get them someone to get over the hump right now? I don't think so. What hump are you talking about, Jim? These A's are kicking A right now. They're making the Pirates, one of the best teams in the major leagues, look silly. They did the same to the Cardinals just a couple of days ago, and they're finally hitting that groove that you and I talked about, I think, just a couple of weeks ago, saying, who's going to hit their groove? I mean, the Rangers are playing great, but Reddick finally starting to come on. Yoannis know, Cespedes is healthy, and he's playing great. Brandon Moss went yard last night. These A's are looking great. So I don't think it's slap in the face at all. I think it shows how good they are this year. The Dan Straley looked awesome last night and they thanked him by sending him back to Sacramento. Exactly. Define make or break then. If this is a make or break year for him, what's the definition of make or break? Uh, Got to double the win total, I think. Got to win at least eight, eight games. I mean, that's not a lot to ask for, especially when they've got I mean, they've been saying for the last two years, give us time, give us time. Year three is when it's going to happen. So year three is here. So they've set the stage as well. They've set the expectation yeah. for putting up or shutting up. And now what do they have? 65 million in cap room. So yeah. they've got a number of picks finally. It's put up or shut up time. Andre Iguodala last night. You got Bogut inside Kate protecting mm -hmm. the rim. This guy behind the back gets it back. He can run the floor. But what I love is his defensive presence out, presence out on the point. Talk about what he's going to give. Is he the missing link to take this team to what we think they're going to go? I think he might be because one of the things at the first part of our choose or lose just a few seconds ago was what impressed me more, Clay or the defense? And I think the thing that actually impressed me the most was the fact that this team was able to have both on the floor at the same time last night. And that's yeah. because of Iguodala because last year they had to decide did they want to have their shooters or do they want to go with more of a defensive set? And now that he's on the team, they can do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So get over because I'm kind of tethered in. You can put your mic down. Do you know how to hockey fight? You know what you do? You don't just hit. No, you don't just swing. No, you, you gotta you grab them. Grab them here. Okay. Okay. Then you got you got control of them. Yeah. And then you give them a duck down, and then what do you pull? And then I pull the sweater. I pull, pull the, the sweater. Pull the sweater. Over the head. Over the head. Now you start kicking. Now you start hitting.